Oi, and we decided to represent Bloomin Brands for our hospitality group challenge project. I will be going over the industry overview portion of our project today. And as you could see here, they operate under the North American um, industry classification system with the code of the 722-511, which stands for a full service restaurant. There are a, ver uh, a, ver a variety of different types of restaurant styles and restaurant services. Um, for restaurant types, we have quick service, fast, casual, casual dining, and fine dining. Now, for the actual size and growth of the industry, we could definitely account for the pandemic that it took a very huge hit. Now, for the gross domestic product for a full service restaurants annually was roughly about a 1.6%. And the sum or how to calculate the GDP is the sum total of all goods, products, and services that are produced by the economy during, during given time period. And the way that this is calculated um, is by dividing the estimated industry sales for any given year by the total annual GDP for the year in the United States. On a positive note, from 2020 to 2022, it is predicted that the estimated number of employees will increase each year by at least 2 to 3%. The degree of the industry concentration usually is found by using a concentration ratio. The concentration ratio is calculated by using the sum of the market percentage held by the largest specified number of firms in the industry. The percentage will usually define the level of concentration, whether it would be low, medium, or high concentration. In 2020, Bloom and Brands as a whole had a low degree of concentration, which calculated about 19% at the time. Government regulations are very, very important, as we all know. Now, the main government regulatory branch for restaurants is known to be the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, as well as the Department of Health. Where Bloom and Brands is headquarters is located, which I mentioned, which is in Tampa, Florida, the DPPR regulates alcohol beverage laws with the Division of Alcoholic Beverages. Lumen Brands um, needs a special restaurant SRX license, which the requirement for that type of license are the beer, wine, and liquor sales are in connection with the restaurant itself, and the consumption can only be on premises. Um, that also entails with a certain number of seats and the swear footage as well to be able to have the license. The sale of alcoholic beverages are usually prohibited after the hours of serving or consumption of food have elapsed. Lumen Brands started with a dream of four friends opening a casual dining restaurant with quality food and exceptional service at a reasonable price, with the idea of an Australian theme of no rules, just right mindset. In March of 1988, they opened the first Outback Steakhouse in Tampa, Florida, where it is now the headquarters of Lumen Brands. With Outback Steakhouse, they added Carrabba's Italian Grill, Bonefish Grill, Fleming Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar, and Aussie Grill by Outback under Bloom and Brands. It is now one of the world's largest dining companies with over 93,000 team members and 1,450 restaurants worldwide. Bloom and Brands has three focus points in their business commitment, the people, the environment, and their ingredients. They pride themselves on an environment where their team members can thrive and do well by being themselves while delivering an experience to, for their guests to remember. They were named America's Best Employers for Diversity in 2019 and 2020, and America's Best Employers for Women in 2019 by Forbes. Their commitment to ingredients lives within building long-term partnerships with suppliers who are dedicated to delivering safe, high quality ingredients in a sustainable way, requiring all of their suppliers to comply with their code of ethics provided to them, focusing on sourcing products that are raised in a sustainable, ethical, and humane manner. In 2011, Blumen Brands aimed to reduce energy by 10% in three years. They exceeded that goal with a 25% reduction in natural gas and electric. 100% of their restaurants used Energy Star equipment and 47 million kilowatt hours annually electricity 
savings through LED lighting efforts. Bloom & Brands offers five casual dining experiences for customers to choose from with differentiation in products and services. Outback Steakhouse is an Australian-inspired casual dining restaurant where new creations and grilled classics are made from scratch daily. Caraba's Italian Grill offers authentic Italian cuisine passed down from our founders' family recipes, only using the best ingredients to prepare fresh and handmade dishes cooked to order in a lively exhibition kitchen. Bonefish Grill, one of my favorites, specializes in a market fresh fish from around the world hand cut in-house every day. At Fleming's Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar, you'll experience a strong passion for prime steak and wine, reflected through an array of exceptional menus that artfully combine a modern approach to traditional steakhouse fare. At Aussie Grill by Outback, it places a more, an emphasis more on younger family-focused and convenience-seeking guests in mind. This content takes fast food dining to a whole new level. The hospitality industry was set to be a new start for many businesses at the start of 2020, but when COVID-19 hit, that was a different story. During the COVID-19 pandemic, women brands did better than expected during the second and third quarters. This caused shares to continue to rise. Part of this can be connected to the fact that Bloomin' Brands did not furlough any employees during the pandemic. This allowed them to be organized, prepared, and to reopen faster than their competitors. With a lot of these restaurants across the country being closed due to mandates, reopening was a slow process. Keeping their employees working through the pandemic may have seemed like a costly labor expense, but saved the corporation money on the back end of reopening. By the end of the third quarter, they had over 90% of their restaurants partially open for indoor dining. Outback Steakhouse wants their customer to enjoy a fun, relaxed, casual atmosphere with an Australian theme experience every time they visit. They want to deliver a high quality, product made up of fresh ingredients, fresh sauces, fresh desserts that are made every single day. And they wanna do all of this while serving generous portions at an affordable price. So how does Bloom & Brands deliver on their value proposition? Through marketing channels, their Dine Rewards program and distribution management. So one way that they do it is through multiple channels of media mediums such as radio advertisements, television advertisements, social media, and search engine marketing. Through these different mediums, they make the customer aware of what to expect when they come in and visit an Outback Steakhouse. Another channel is through their Dine Rewards program. This program drives traffic of new customers as well as past loyal customers. They also deliver fresh and quality products as this is part of their value proposition. So they implement a distribution management program that enables their staff to effectively manage and prioritize their supply chain. This also offers the, cus the customer quality assurance. Outback Steakhouse has three different revenue streams. They have ongoing royalties, direct sales with customers, and the sales of franchise rights. So Outback Steakhouse has one of the highest royalty fees when compared to the different restaurants in the Bloomin' Brands Incorporation. Their fees start at $40,000 with up to a 3.5% fee. Another source of revenue is from direct sales with customers at each establishment. So in 2019, Outback Steakhouse generated approximately $2.13 billion in restaurant sales. A third stream of revenue is the sales of their franchise rights. There are three behind the scenes um, keys that we're going to talk about, and those are the key resources, the key partners, and the key activities. So Bloom and Brand sources and supplies for all of their restaurants in their group. So this ensures that Outback receives the same product time and time again, enabling them to offer consistency to the consumer. Employees are also a huge resource for Outback Steakhouse. They are known for putting their employees first as part of their business strategy. 
Outback Steakhouse has an in-house application where they offer a delivery service and takeout order option for their customers. But they've also partnered with some third-party delivery services such as DoorDash. This allows them to reach a wider audience. Outback Steakhouse has a few different key partners. One of the first ones is their partnership with CH Robinson. This helps them build their supply chain efficiency. It helps them save on cost, and the company continues to grow these costs to add up. This gives the company complete visibility when ordering, tracking, and tracing products from new and multiple suppliers. They've also partnered with their food suppliers and stakeholders to bring the finest and freshest and most sustainable ingredients to the customer's table. They are active members of the Restaurant Roundtable for Sustainability so that they can be informed and completely transparent in their operation um, to remain sustainable. They've also partnered with a food donation connection to help minimize their waste. And what this partnership does is it takes, um, it attempts to take all the excess food that's left over and actually put that food out into the community um, to help feed families in need. Once again, Outback Steakhouse believes in putting their staff or their Outbackers first. So during the trying time that was COVID-19 pandemic, they adapted to be able to offer different takeout and delivery avenues and still be able to bring the food to the consumer at an affordable price. And they did this by streamlining, the, streamlining their menus, meaning they reduced their menus um, to minimize what they would have to order to still be able to offer such a, a low affordable price. And they also communicate with their customers. Another way that they communicate is they encourage repeat visits through their application and their Dine Rewards program. Food and beverage, labor cost, and operating expenses all have a direct impact on Outback Steakhouse's ability to deliver the value proposition. Food and beverage costs are on average the most expensive cost that's incurred. This cost includes all the food and beverage, obviously, but also the distribution that's set up by Bloom and Brands to cater to all of them. Labor costs include the incentive to, that it's given to employees to deliver a quality service. This is one of the most important costs because you have to pay your employees an adequate or fair wage in order to have them come to work and provide the service that you expect um, and to produce the product that you want your customers to receive. Um, paying customers fairly will also help uh, reduce um, turnover and increase employee retention. And obviously one of the goals of the, the value proposition is to provide that warm, fun atmosphere. And you can't provide that experience without um, occurring, incurring some operating expenses. Um, these expenses include paying your rent, um, paying your utilities, and paying maintenance to keep the building up to standard. So for our SWOT analysis, we have internal environmental and external environmental. For our internal environmental, there's different strengths and weaknesses that we'll be going over. For our loyalty rewards program, we have dining rewards, so it can be used on all five of the restaurants. It doesn't have to be specifically on one. We also are a very known global franchise. So the good thing about Blooming Brands is that, especially Outback, it's literally in 19 different countries. Um, for the weaknesses, there's two main. It's our limited number of suppliers and the limited liquidity position. So for Blooming Brands, they literally only have suppliers in two different countries. So imagine having all these other restaurants around the world and not being able to supply them as fast so that the food is as fresh as possible. And then our limited liquidity, everyone has been affected by COVID. So 2020, everyone's drops, numbers have dropped, especially in the hospitality management industry. For our external environmental, we have opportunities and threats. Um, there's a lot of opportunities out there, especially in the hospitality industry, as, no, as well as many threats. It really depends which side of it you want to see. It's very popular now that people are being going for brunch. No matter the age you are, everyone has been enjoying that you can have a lunch, but brunch earlier and it's different foods. And Bonefish actually started adding this. And a lot of people really loved it and wanted to experience the 
this brunch. So adding it to all of the five restaurants will really benefit the business. Also online presence. So especially with COVID, people didn't want to go out, but they still wanted to eat out. And they benefit a lot with DoorDash, Uber Eats, um, having their website to be able to deliver and take out as well. And then we have our threats. So in hospitality industry, there's so many restaurants that are going on and opening every single day. So you never know what's going to be new coming in, what's going to be going out, and what's going to be closing. And then labor wages. So the United States has been putting the limited and they wanted to put it higher. So they're deciding either we have to cut people from the business and make our increases our prices, but then our customers will go away because prices are going so high. But as well, if we're paying too little, our customer service will go down because people feel like they're not getting paid enough for what the job they're doing. And of course, Corona. Corona has affected so many people in the, around the world uh, from last year to this year, and numbers have been going down. COVID-19 has had a detrimental effect on all industries, but specifically the hospitality industry. This virus has led to a state of emergency to be declared, stay-at-home orders to be issued, and non-essential businesses to be shut down. By March 22, 2020, 32 states had closed their restaurants and bars, and others had limited their restaurants to take out service only. This chart shows the cumulative confirmed COVID-19 cases for 2020. COVID-19 was first identified back in December of 2019 in Wuhan, China. The chart pictured shows the identification process that the virus went through, and its origins are speculated to be the famous Wuhan markets. This virus has had such a detrimental impact on the restaurant industry that over 8 million people have lost their jobs or been furloughed and over $270 million has been lost since the start of the pandemic. Now, in terms of booming brands, we can see how COVID-19 has impacted them by taking a look at their first quarter preliminary financial results for 2020. They basically took the quarter one financial results for 2019 and compared them with 2020 to see how they fared overall. And it was found that total revenues from 2019 to 2020 had a 10% change, which is very drastic. Now, what is a solution to this issue to get people to come back to restaurants and spend money and hopefully get the restaurant industry back and running? The solution we've come up with is parking lot dinner service because it entices people to eat socially distanced, of course, at one of our restaurants. The solution would allow to go orders to remain the main focus of our business, give customers a new and unique way to dine, and give Bloomin' Brands a much needed revenue stream. This solution would only take about one month to implement, during which floor plans would be made with considerations for COVID-19 social distancing protocol. Staff training would begin during this month to make sure that they're ready to serve people in person. Marketing considerations would be made to get the word out about the new dining services to the public. Inventory considerations would be made to make sure that there's enough produce to meet the demands of both the to-go orders and the parking lot dinner service. And after that month of planning, you're ready to um, implement the plan. Now, how will we measure the overall success of this solution? In general, we'll know we're overall successful if our customers are satisfied, our employees are satisfied, and we've seen a general increase in business due to the implementation of the solution. An analytical way to make sure our solution is successful is through internal audits. And these can be financial, employee, or even health audits. When operating any business or implementing any new uh, operational practice, it is best to make sure that those plans are sustainable. In general, Blooming Brands has done an incredible job of setting itself up as a leader in the COVID-19 um, response. And so in general, we're gonna continue to follow all the health and safety guidelines that we have been, as well as invest in technologies that make customers feel safe and satisfied. And an example of that can be a company like Uber Eats or Tap and Go. 
in terms of the solution itself, um, budget allocation is what will prim primarily sustain this plan. And those uh, budget allocations will be made to maintain the new health and safety protocols, maintain the increased inventory that would come with the new solution, as well as maintain um, the marketing strategies and even increase the marketing strategies that we will, we will be implementing to address COVID-19 and how we're operating as well as how we're implementing this solution. How can we make sure that if anything goes wrong, we still operate a functional business? Um, a crisis response team can be implemented regionally to address any operational issues at a location by location basis. Outbreak contingencies can be made to address either closures or safety protocols for dealing with outbreaks in an internal employee aspect or external customer aspect. Um, supply chain contingencies should be made to make sure that we have enough inventory to um, sustain this solution and sustain our to-go orders as well. So that would be having another supply chain in the ready in case anything goes wrong. And lastly, in terms of the solution, we're gonna have an overflow contingency plan for our outside seating. And that is just gonna be our, um, the parking lot dining services it will be uh, reservation only to prevent any overflow and um, crowding of um, our businesses.